It's another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, episode 950, and I'm Dr. Neil, your host of the show. Welcome back to another special Friday edition of Optimal Health Daily, where I answer your questions. On the other days, I read health and fitness blogs to you, kind of like an ongoing audiobook. But on Fridays, I do something a little special. You send me questions, and I answer them for you right here on the show. Now, in case you're wondering, why should I bother sending you a question? Do you really know what you're talking about? Well, I do have my Doctor of Public Health degree with an emphasis in chronic disease prevention and nutrition. I also have my Master of Public Health degree with an emphasis in health promotion and health education. I'm also a registered dietitian nutritionist, a certified health education specialist, and a certified exercise physiologist through the American College of Sports Medicine. I've also published peer-reviewed research and have presented at national conferences. And I share that with you so you have some level of confidence that when you ask me a question, I'll tell you the truth. And I'm sure you're excited to hear today's question. So let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. Hi, Dr. Neil. First of all, I'd like to thank you for the time and dedication you put into this podcast. I really appreciate it and love listening to it. And my question for you is about cupping. Multiple massage therapists have recommended I try it due to deep muscle tension and tightness in my back. And I'm wondering how effective is cupping. I've tried it a couple of times now and I've felt looser after the sessions, but I'm wondering if it's just a placebo effect. Thank you so much. Hi, Jamie. Thank you so much for your question and thank you so much for your kind words. I'm so glad you enjoy the podcast. Now, it seems like I always have a story that somehow relates to a question I've received and this one's no different. Last summer, when my family and I were at the beach, I noticed one of my family members had marks on their back. They looked like bruises, but were shaped like perfect circles. And these bruises seemed to be perfectly spaced on her back. And when I asked, they said that their massage therapist mentioned there may be some slight bruising after the cupping treatment they received. Now, at the time, I wasn't familiar with the procedure. So I asked, what's cupping therapy? They said that the therapist put heated silicone cups on their back to create a suction-like effect. And they did this to help with some of their chronic pain. I asked if it helped, and they said that this was their first time trying it, so they weren't sure yet. Since then, I kept forgetting to ask whether the therapy was helping. But even if I did remember to ask, this would be considered anecdotal evidence anyway. So I looked at the research instead. And what I found, to my surprise, is that there is some promising research showing that cupping therapy may help with certain conditions, which I'll get to. But first, a bit of background. Cupping therapy is considered a type of complementary and alternative medicine. Now, it's used around the world, and it's been around for centuries. It's believed that the Greek historian Herodotus mentions cupping as a prescribed practice back in 400 BCE, or before the Common Era. In the 19th century, cupping therapy was reportedly used by healers in monasteries. To this day, some cultures view cupping therapy as a way to restore the flow of chi. Chi is considered the source of our energy or life source. The basic idea behind cupping is this. Therapists apply a heated cup to the skin. By heating the cup, the goal is to create a vacuum-like effect. And as a result of this vacuum-like effect on the skin, it's supposed to improve blood flow. More blood flow to these areas of the body potentially means better healing. Now, cupping therapy has been used to treat everything from headaches to neck pain to poor appetite and indigestion and even narcolepsy. Now, I should mention that there are different types of cupping methods. It's believed that there are 10 commonly used cupping methods. I'm not gonna list them all here, but to give you an idea, there's light cupping, strong cupping, medium cupping, moving cupping, needle cupping, hot needle cupping, water cupping, herbal cupping, and so on. Now, these cups have been made of silicone, glass, metal, bamboo, and even gourds. Silicone is often preferred because of its flexibility, so it can easily cover different areas of the body. There are also different shapes and sizes of cups. There are the traditional circular-shaped ones, but also bell-shaped cups too, and the openings may range anywhere from one to three inches across. In the Western world, wet and dry cupping are most often used. So in these situations, basically the therapist will put something flammable in a cup and set it on fire. The flammable substance could be alcohol, herbs, or paper, or something else altogether. As the fire goes out, the cup is placed upside down on the skin and left there for three minutes. Again, this is designed to create a vacuum-like effect. 
The therapist may even move the cups along the skin to create a massage-like effect. Now here's what the research says about cupping therapy. A randomized control trial found that cupping massage is no more effective than other types of therapy like progressive muscle relaxation in reducing chronic nonspecific neck pain. But other randomized controlled trials have found that cupping massage was effective in reducing pain and improving quality of life in those with chronic neck pain and even those with carpal tunnel syndrome. Now, randomized control trials are considered a gold standard when it comes to research methodologies. Looking a little further, I found a meta-analysis. A meta-analysis is where researchers look at a bunch of already published studies, like the aforementioned randomized control trials, and conduct their own analysis on these published studies. And they found that cupping therapy may actually help with pain management. Now, meta-analyses are considered an even higher gold standard, maybe like the platinum standard when it comes to research. But here's the trouble. The authors of the meta-analyses acknowledge that these published studies have used different types of cupping therapies. This makes it very difficult to know which type of cupping therapy may be most helpful. Plus, looking at how many times patients received the cupping therapy, well, that tended to differ across studies as well. And all of this makes it very difficult to draw any real conclusions from these studies. Just because something's been used for hundreds of years doesn't mean it actually helps. This is why we need research to know. And while the published research on cupping therapy seems promising, there are just so many different types and methods of using cupping therapy, it's hard to know which one will truly help. Now, there are some reported side effects from this treatment. Luckily, most of these are minor and are confined to the area where the cups touch the skin. The most commonly reported side effects are burns and bruising, kind of like what I saw in my family member at the beach. There is the potential for skin infections as well, but this isn't common. So based on all of this, here's my take. When we don't have enough research to know whether something is actually effective, here's what we can do. If it helps and it's not causing you any harm, you don't get any burns, for example, or you don't get any like permanent bruising, then by all means, continue. If you find cupping therapy unpleasant or too costly, there may be other ways to achieve these same effects. So while we need more research to know whether it's actually effective, if it's not causing you any harm, you enjoy it, then by all means, continue. Thank you again for the question, Jamie. You'll be entered into a very small raffle every month to win a book. And if you want to submit a question and have a chance to win books, it's really easy. You can call in your question. The number is 61 I Love OHD, or you could submit your audio question at oldpodcast.com slash ask. All right, that's another week of Optimal Health Daily. I can't believe that's 950 episodes and it's all thanks to you. Thank you so much for listening every day. Thank you for listening all the way through. And I wanna wish my nephew a very happy early birthday. And I'll see you back here on Monday where your optimal life awaits.